Hello everyone. We know that portfolio-based assessment is quite authentic in measuring students' performance and achievement in the course learning outcome. But um, when we are designing portfolio-based assessment, it's also critical to understand that the tools that we have chosen for students to use should be user-friendly and not really having that high learning curve until they forget about the whole purpose of the portfolio assessment. It's not about creating impressive portfolio alone, but it's more on the quality of the content that they have put in, in the portfolio. Because I've seen some who spend a lot of time using different tools uh, in designing their portfolio and in the end, it looks very sophisticated, but the content is not really uh, of higher order thinking or, um, you know, of a good quality. They focus too much on the impressive part and they forget about the content. So I'm going to tell you two simple tools that the students can use to focus more on the content that they're going to put in rather than the impressive look of the portfolio. Uh, the first one is Google site. It's quite easy to use, very simple to use, very clean, very simple and is mobile friendly. And the other one is of course Padlet. Again, when we talk about portfolio based assessment, we have to be clear that we are measuring the input of uh, what we have given them and how they transfer them in the form of quality output. First one is Google site, but before I go to Google site, let's take a look at the simple uh, example of a portfolio for my course, BBL 2093 Language and Computing. Now, usually I would you know, ask my student to read articles and then give it back in class or maybe produce a written report. But if I change it to ePortfolio, I have to change the medium a bit and let them show me that they really understand what they have read or maybe show me that they are able to critically understand what is uh, conveyed to them in the topic or what has been discussed in the uh, unit, right? For example, if I give them articles to read and I would like them to produce a reading log instead of giving me in the form of a written uh, form like uh, Microsoft Word and all that, I require them to produce slides. So after they have read the article, they have to produce slides like reading log 1, log 2, log 3 and put it in one uh, Google site like this. After that, um, besides giving them the article reading log, they can also uh, respond critically to the question that are posed for each unit. For example, this unit uh, is a response to problems with machine translation. This one is emotional issues in NLP. And this one is a uh, response to software in for textual analysis. And just, as you can see, this is different from this is Google Doc and this is uh, YouTube. So they can have many forms, but depending on the bandwidth that they have, they should be able to respond according to the type of medium that they want to. If they cannot upload video, they can always produce in Google Docs and then put it in like a one page response if they want to. And then of course the overall reflection. So this is a sample of how ePortfolio should look like. Of course, when you give them portfolio tasks like this, you should be clear in your instruction. Um, like what are your expectation in terms of the content that they should be producing? It's not really good by just giving a very general topic and ask them to produce an e-portfolio out of it. There, sh there should be some set of expectation that you want them to, to achieve. Like how many articles do you expect them to uh, read up? Or if, they have, if you have given them the articles, you should be clear of what you expect them to focus on. That would help them to produce a better portfolio rather than fo focusing too much on the look and feel of the uh, whole portfolio itself. The, their focus should be on the content, more on what are they getting from the activities or from the readings that you have provided. Okay, that, that should be clear. So how do you start an e-portfolio like this? If you tell us, so then just go to sites.google.com, right? And then they can quickly type in their title, Portfolio for PBL 2093. Now they can choose uh, the themes if they want to, right? They can have many themes here. So they can just uh, type in my portfolio. Now you see a blank canvas like this. This is what I like the most about uh, uh, Google site is all drag and drop so they can choose the layout if they want to let's say they want to lay out a tree they just choose lay out a tree let's say if you give them three reading log then they can immediately type first reading log one just type in the title first before they produce the content right okay then they can plus in what they wanted so up uh, here, this is where they can upload the material. So either from Drive or from uh, yeah, their PC. All right. If they if they uh, would like to upload video to YouTube, they can just share the YouTube. So this is where they put in their responses. 
right so if they need to insert a text title just drag the text box right like this and then you know my reading lock okay put in the title put in the middle if you don't want they can put headings right and the beauty is you can just duplicate this and then drag it down if you ask them to do a video response then they can do the video response and maybe only two you can just choose this layout so they can upload the youtube here upload the youtube here right and then keep in the title video response one video response two right you see everything is in one page and which is quite convenient and if you want to preview this in mobile you just click the preview up uh, button up there and then you will see this thing okay if you see, this is how it looks like in mobile in tablet and in pc okay so um that's how it looks like close the preview as you can see um this is only one page if you need to add pages if you want them to add pages like uh, sorting by section then you can go to pages here and then add new page and then just say maybe about me okay then a new page will appear here and then they can do the, the same thing so let's say if you want let's say reflection to be split then just put reflection okay and then they can drag and drop so as you can see it's quite simple to use there's so many features that they soon can use too but again uh, the focus should be the quality of the content so they can upload the materials to uh, google doc google slides but uh, share it to share the link first and then put it into their portfolio or upload directly from their uh, pc that's one way so this is google sites once they're finished all they have to do is just click publish and then view publish site so uh, this is the link that they give it to you you can also use other platform for uh, of course portfolio like wix and webly and all that but i find google sites uh, quite interesting because they can get everything from google drive that they have so let's say they created google docs the google slides uh, once they have done it in uh, those sites they can just pull it into this portfolio which is very uh, seamlessly done so that would make it easier for them to complete the e-portfolio tasks right okay now, um, another example would be Padlet. This is another sample of ePortfolio via Padlet. A lot of people think that Padlet is just used for discussion and chatting. But if you organize nicely, it can also be a place for them to do ePortfolio. For example, this one, um, I, I categorize this into different columns. Like this one, I want them to respond using my map. So they can just put their my map here. And this one... Um, I want them to ask questions about the article. So instead of them telling me what the article is about, they ask questions about the uh, the articles. Let's say after reading the articles, I found that these three questions remain unclear. You know, one, two, three. Teach them to be critical in reading by asking questions and then uh, as if they are questioning what the authors are doing. So that would create or intensify the level of thinking a bit, the hot part, right? The higher order thinking. And then, of course, the typical unit uh, reflection, if you want them to do reflection as well. So if you do like this, they will know what to do. So in each column, they just have to click Add. And the beauty of Padlet is it also allows you to upload materials like photos, uh, images. You can even link to YouTube and all that. So they can even add voice if they want to. So Padlet can also be a good portfolio alternative. So how do you do this type? Uh, very simple. Just go add a Padlet and then tell the student to use the shelf uh but uh, method right and then of course you have to show them an example first if without an example they would not have a clear idea so you can create something like this and let them take a look of a sample and then they can produce the padlet once they have done their padlet all they have to do is just to copy the link up here and give it to you they can submit in their uh, lms or submit through whatsapp if you're using whatsapp and then uh, you know check through the you can then check through their the content Pretty, pretty simple and pretty neat. Like this one, Padlet, it doesn't really consume a lot of bandwidth because everything is quite text-based and the student will be able to respond even using a mobile phone. So portfolio-based assessment is really good to authentically measure the student's ability in achieving the intended learning outcome. But uh, when we are designing the rubrics in measuring what uh, they have produced in the e-portfolio, we should really minimize on the the appeal part you know how it looks like how impressive it looks like 
and more on the content bit so when you put your rubrics in if you want to award marks for the appeal maybe it shouldn't be too too much you know no don't don't be judgmental in the quality by just looking at the outer layer alone um, try to look into how you can ensure that the student produce quality uh, content in within the e-portfolio by providing proper guidance like uh, you know guiding questions and even uh, task that really triggers them to think like for example this one you instead of they telling me what the article is about they have to question the the article itself so that would encourage them to think critically and also produce a better content for the e-portfolio so no matter how you want to package your e-portfolio assessment um, try your best to give guiding questions and also to uh, guide your student to use certain tools like in this case i'm showing you how Google Sites can be used and also Padlet can be used to achieve that uh, purpose because we don't want them to go on and discover different different tools and then suddenly they focus too much on the tools itself rather than the content. What they are supposed to be focusing is on the content. So try to come up with a sample for them to take a look at and then you know you don't have to give them the answer just show them how a portfolio should look like that for example this is how it looks like in padlet and this is how it looks like in uh, in the form of google sites so once they get the idea of it they will be able to produce their own e-portfolio no matter uh you know what tools uh, that they they tend to choose okay that's all for this video if you have any questions or comment you can just leave it in the uh, comment box below and then i'll be more than happy to answer them Thank you very much and uh, don't forget to subscribe.